shake your legs and your hands. You know, you know why we encourage people to dance while praising God? Because as you're doing that in your act of praise and worship, when you're you know, moving every part of your body, we have seen over the years, so much of healing takes place during praise and worship. People with arthritis, back pain, headache, neck pain, spondylosis, all healed during the time of praise and worship. Hallelujah. So believe in faith and you move your hands, your legs. Especially I tell you, you move that area of your body that you find you have a lot of pain and you're unable to move. When you do that, you are releasing faith and saying, God, I'm going to move that part that hurts the most and I believe your healing power is going to go right through it and heal me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So shall we do that? Yes. Come on, let's go. Spirit, now, Almighty oh God, continue to speak to us and reveal to us the truth. Have your way in our lives, Almighty oh God. Touch every heart as you speak, O oh Lord, that not one will go back home this way. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst men, and blessed the fruit of thy own Jesus. Holy, Holy Mary, Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So, Jesus anointed his disciples, and we read in John 13 that he loved them to the very end, and he loved everyone, including Judas. And in verse 2, we learned that Satan put that seed in Judas' heart. Praise God. Did Jesus give Judas the best? Yes. Did he have any partial between the other disciples? No. no. He gave him the best. Praise God. Now, in Matthew 26, Just go down, baby. I think it's verse 14. Yeah, 14. I want all of you to read this, please. Then one of the twelve, called Judas Iscariot, went unto the chief priest and said unto them, What will you give me? What will you give me, and I will deliver him unto you. Was he the same person who was anointed by God? Yes. Was he the same person who was performing mighty signs and wonders? Yes. Was he the same person who was casting out demons? Yes. Then why is it that Judas went to the priest and said, what will you give me? And I will hand him over to you. Judas had dreams, had desires <coughs> for money. And he knew one thing, that even if I go and deliver Jesus, Jesus will always be able to get out of that situation. There were many a times 
when the crowd, when people came against him, they wanted him to be stoned to death. They wanted him to be thrown from the cliff. And every time the Bible says, Jesus went through the midst of them and no one could touch him for his hour had not yet come. Judas receiving all the best from Jesus is now going and saying to Satan, Satan, tell me, what will you give me? And I will deliver him to you. Mati. And they, please read that. And they covenant with him for, for, for 30 silver coins. says and from that time he sought opportunity to betray him. There are many of us sitting here who has received Jesus who has not only washed us with his blood, gave his life, changed our life, cancelled our past, gave us his spirit, got us born again, Praise God, our journey with Him began. And as this journey went on, there came a time, might be you lost your job, might be there was a financial problem, and you were walking by that road. And as you were walking, you looked at the same part where you once used to be. And you could see through that window your friend sitting there and drinking. And that's the time. For two years, three years, you never crossed that bar. But now, when the pressure was so much on your mind, you got into that bar, sat with that same friend and the very thing that Jesus delivered you, you went and picked up that glass and began to drink. The Lord has set us free. He has set us free. We are the people who come to church, praise God, lift our hands. But we are the same people who is saying to Satan, Satan, what will you give me? And I will hand him over to you. Look at that chapter 27. When the morning was come, all the chief priests and the elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. And when they had bound him, they led him away and delivered him to Pontius Pilate the governor. Then Judas, which had betrayed him, 
when he saw that he was condemned and repented condemned repented himself and brought again the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priest and elder saying i have sinned in that i have betrayed the innocent blood i have sinned in that i have betrayed the innocent blood and they said what is that to us you see to it yourself what is that to me you see to it yourself and he cast down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed and went and hanged himself was that God's plan for Judas no. <coughs> the coins are still laid down and those coins are betrayal of innocent blood are you speaking to Satan and saying what will you give me and I will hand him over to you a young girl is sent by her parents to go to college to study <coughs> and there all her friends are having boyfriends and they tell her come on you have none and she decides okay let me also have one. Their friendship grows. And one fine day, she says to the boy, Listen, we got to get married soon. And the boy says, Why? And she says, I'm pregnant. And the boy turns and says, You see to it yourself. In my life, I've come across young youth. I still remember a couple, the boy only 23 and the girl 22. And they were crying. And they were saying, please pray for us. The boy said, I'm suffering from HIV. And because of me, my wife is suffering from HIV. <coughs> what will you give me? That boy wanted pleasure spend some time with the prostitute before getting married. Just got married and came to know that he is suffering from a child. And the girl went and did her test and she got a child as well. And the boy was crying and crying and saying, Brother, pray to God. He went and began to cry. And he said to devil, listen devil, I don't want that pleasure anymore. Give me back my health. What do you think the devil must have said? What is that to me? You see to it yourself. The coins covered with innocent blood 
is still laid down and the devil is again and again asking you to pick it up. I know a person married, having a family. He says, brother, every time I get into oppression, I just go on the net. A Christian, a Catholic, who goes to church every day. And he says, my problem is, brother, I'm a slave. I'm a slave of pornography. I keep on picking up this coin and I can't even love my wife with the love that God has given me but only with lust. What kind of coins is Satan giving to us who are in the church? I know sometimes some lady, she will come and say, Hey brother, never in my life I had ever thought that I would be having a wrong relationship with a man. I have always been faithful. But when crisis came, trials came and pressure came, that was the time when the devil tells you, come on, pick up that coin. Somebody came to help me. It was just a friendship. And at that time, that friendship began to grow. And I, being a wife, 23 years married, forgot that I'm a wife. And I got into that lust and got into that relationship. Never did I ever think that I would end up there. And now I'm in a problem. Now my husband knows, my children knows, and I want my husband, my children, my marriage back. And I tell the devil, I don't want that lust anymore. I don't want that pleasure anymore. Give me back my marriage. Give me back my family. And he's saying, what is that to me? You see to it yourself. We run a reality. And there are sometimes the boys that are brought are so young. I remember twins, they were only 15, but hardcore drug addicts, crime, most of their organs damaged. They never thought that one day they would be a drug addict. Friends said, there is nothing wrong in trying Everyone is doing, come on, pick up that coin. It just started with friends, but by the time they were 15, so many parts of their body damaged, and now crying and saying to the devil, take these drugs, give me back my health. And Satan is saying, what is that to me? You see to it yourself. What are those areas of your life, your secret life, your private life, that Satan is again and again saying to you, I will give you the pleasure that you want, but I want you to pick up your coin. 
That's exactly what he did with Judas. The word of God says he put that thought in his heart. And that same Judas, when he partook of the body and blood of Jesus in verse number 26, the Bible says Satan entered into him. My friend, in your personal life, in your secret life, which are those areas when the pressure comes on you that you quickly run to pick up those coins? And every time you pick up that coin, it's going to give you the pleasure of that world, but you can never, never be satisfied. Because nothing in this world can satisfy, because there is nothing more than the Lord Jesus Christ. My friend, my you are sitting there and nobody knows. And the devil will keep on saying, listen, you can take that pleasure. Nobody will ever know. And as long as you are holding that coin, a day will come when this will be exposed. And the day it will be exposed, you will not only lose yourself, it will have an effect on your family, on your children, your marriage, your finance, anything and everything. Because as long as you hold these coins, Satan has legal access into that area of your life and destroy you. I can be praising here, hallelujah, and singing songs and dance, but I can dance with those coins in my hand. And when I'm all alone, run to that pleasure of sin that is leading me not only away from God, but leading me to a destination called eternal death. God had such a great plan for Judas, but that plan was totally destroyed because he cooperated with the devil. Today, as you are seated here, my friend, What is the price of your soul? Is it alcohol? Is it drugs? Is it sex? What is the price of your soul that you are saying, Devil, you give me all that and I will hand him over to you. Can you please close your eyes? Can you reflect in your life? What are those areas that Satan is asking you again and again to pick up those coins. Is it he saying a little alcohol will not damage you? A little drug will not damage you? A little pornography will not damage you? A one visit to a prostitute will not damage you. A small wrong relationship will not damage you. What kind of thoughts is Satan offering you? What kind of areas that you get so quickly bitter 
and angry that in that bitterness instead of running to God you run to sin is it that you had a wonderful relationship with somebody and it was so close that you almost get got engaged and might be you both were serving god together but one fine day might be one dropped you and got in relationship with your friend and now you are bitter you are hurt you are in pain and are you instead of running to god running away from him in your marriage what are those areas that satan is again and again tempting you to lift those coins covered with innocent blood my friend right now ask yourself what is the price of my soul <laughs>